I literally fell off my chair when we got the results from Review Field Well yeah. uh, from Isobrine up to 259 milligrams per liter, the highest lithium and brine concentrations in Canada to date based on publicly available data. It's right up our alley. It's exactly what we do. Bring brines, process them, capture what we think will probably be the best project in Canada, get our hands on that early, be part of developing that. EMP Metals Corp. is a client and sponsor of PinnacleDigest.com, whose parent company owns shares and warrants of EMP Metals Corp. Please read the full disclosure at the end of this video. Many governments, car makers, and financial institutions are doubling down on what is becoming perhaps the most dominant energy investment trend this century, the electrification movement, which relies heavily on lithium and finding more economic sources of it. But like many potentially transformational trends, it recently got ahead of itself. The price drop magnified the importance of specific viability challenges for many lithium assets and projects around the world. While the size of a deposit is important, so too is grade, project location, timing, extraction techniques, the regulatory environment, and of course, economics and various price scenarios. I've traveled to the southeastern corner of Saskatchewan to meet with an early entry lithium exploration and development company focused on potential large-scale direct lithium extraction assets. In short, they're really looking to develop and extract lithium from brine. And the company, known as EMP Metals, has the goal of reaching pilot level production by Q1 of 2024. Today I'll be speaking with EMP's President and CEO, Mr. Rob Gamely, to find out how his company, EMP Metals, plans to achieve its long-term goal of large-scale lithium extraction here in Saskatchewan. Rob, first off, thanks for having us. We're here in southeastern Saskatchewan. The drills are turning behind us. The drill, I should say, it's it's huge, way bigger than a you know regular hard rock drill. Why did you as a company choose to focus on DLE versus hard rock? Uh, DLE offers a really high recovery rate, often 90% uh, plus, and it allows for a quick to production uh, scenario versus hard rock mining. You could be in production within a year versus hard rock mining it could be five to 10 years with feasibility, permitting, and infrastructure. As well, DLE has a much more favorable uh, ESG profile. We've got about 90% less uh, surface footprint. As well, the hard rock mining, which involves roasting, uh, harsh chemicals, is more energy intensive and um, also has a larger freshwater uh, requirement. So DLE is a much more environmentally sustainable option. So Viewfield and Mansur are the company's flagships. Where do things stand today? Where, where, where have you come from? Where are we at? We've drilled one well uh, here at Viewfield um, where we encountered the highest lithium and brine concentrations in Canada to date based on publicly available data. At Mansur, we've uh, re-entered uh, two acquired well bores and tested high lithium concentrations there as well. Both have high flow rates. Um, additionally, we've just uh, produced a preliminary uh, resource assessment. So we have a, an inferred resource, a very targeted, high quality resource, 1.1 million tons. Now is that at Viewfield? Uh, that's across both properties. So okay. at Viewfield, the concentration would be even higher, probably 200 milligrams per liter, which is what we showed when we uh, had a blended rate with all zones open. So what's the purpose of the current drill program like behind us here at Viewfield and will this play into the pilot production at all? Yeah, the, the, the current drill program here is to capitalize on historic results at, at Viewfield, prove commerciality uh, and prepare wells and infrastructure for our pilot plant ASAP. Can you take us back to the initial moment you realized you had potential here at Viewfield. What, what was that like and what made you really want to lean into this project? I remember that day as clear as, as yesterday. I mean, I literally fell off my chair when we got the results from Review Field Well yeah. uh, from Isobrine, up to 259 milligrams per liter, the highest lithium and brine concentrations in Canada to date based on publicly available data. We had to send the, the test to another lab for, for retesting to ensure these uh, results were accurate and, and they were. Um, you know, obviously great as great as king. Um, and uh, we really knew it was time to lean into the project after seeing those kinds of concentration. You guys have already made a discovery. What makes you different and what's your focus as we head towards, as you head towards, you know, Q1 2024? EMP is an economically driven team. So we have a focused approach on project economics and time to production, i.e. cash flow, not just building resource size. We want to establish commercial viability and, and start producing lithium powder. So it's a much more targeted approach. Can you expand a little bit on the pilot production? What is it intended to achieve? Like how big is the run going to be? What is that going to look like? Yeah, the pilot project would be here at Viewfield. It would be intended to uh, achieve 
feasibility and economics. Yeah. So you know, a lot of this will depend on uh, the PA, which we are doing uh, with Spruill, as well as the engineering uh, and what, what concentrations you use. And with respect to capital, you guys raised five million earlier this year. How much money are you gonna need to move into pallet production? I would uh, say we'd probably need somewhere near term budget around five to seven million dollars. Um, I don't think that's in a reasonable amount of uh, money. I don't foresee a lot of uh, difficulty in raising that kind of money, uh, given, given what we're expecting to see uh, out of our PEA, which will be out in uh, the fall of 2023. And that PEA, will that give the market a rough estimate of the cost per ton? That'll give a rough estimate and it'll be a very useful uh, comparison in order to contextualize us against our peers that have produced preliminary economic assessments. You know, even in our resource report, for example, uh, you know, we used a 50 milligram per liter uh, cutoff grade. Now, if that cutoff grade is increased to 75 milligrams per liter, we still have around 75% of our resource in place. Okay. And whereas a lot of our peers, if that cutoff were, were to be applied, I don't know what kind of percentages they would have, yeah. but I sincerely doubt it would be 75%. As investors look out, you know, the next sort of three to six months, the next few quarters into Q1 2024, what would you have them focus on and how would you have them gauge EMP metals? What I always look at is uh, execution. And so it's management's execution on outlined objectives, yeah. achieving those in a reasonable time frame. So the PEA is certainly something for us to focus and for investors to focus on is that will really have a economic basis in comparison against uh, peers. Uh, pilot production, you know, actually becoming a producer and producing lithium powder would be a huge milestone as well which we are again anticipating for Q1 of 2024. And I would also add that, um, you know, based on our results, you know, there's been quite a stir in the, uh, not only in the industry, but in the investment community. So I don't think it's unrealistic that uh, there might be a potential strategic or industry partner. And I think that would be a, a tremendous endorsement of our project. Rob, thanks for meeting with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next, I'll be speaking with Mr. Cam Taylor a member of the project technical team and also the CEO and chairman of EMP's joint venture partner, Rock Resources. Cam has extensive experience working in this region of the country and will help shed some light on what makes it a prospective area for a company like EMP Metals. Cam, it's great to be with you. Now, as a member of EMP Metals technical team, how are you going to be able to help them advance their lithium brine project? The key reason we're here because of our, our uh, technical history. Initially, it's uh, been focused on uh, the geological part and finding where the highest concentrations are. Now that we've identified that and we've got the best well in Canada to date, we think we have the right operating area. Now we're moving into the preliminary economic assessment. We've got to fill out all of the economic parameters. This play that we've discovered is about 20,000 tons per square mile in it of in-place lithium in the Dupero. So that's a very unusual value concentration. It's gonna let us put uh, over 100 wells into a 20 square mile area, get all the plumbing done, get the facilities in place. Very small footprint compared to some other projects. So uh, we're working on the engineering of that, what the development plan looks like. And as part of that, we're busy talking to a lot of the direct lithium extraction companies, DLE companies, because with our knowledge about the, the pump systems as we bring this brine in, and uh, you know what, what types of temperatures, pressures we're gonna run them at, how much uh, tank space we need, holding capacity prior to running through, and then back down again, it's the exact same business we do in the oil patch. That's what I was going to ask you. Like, you guys have a lot of experience in terms of extraction and dealing with water. And the oil industry really is a brine harvesting industry. We bring brine in to a central facility like this. We pipeline it in from well pads. And once we get it here, we're running it through a processing building to extract five or 10% oil out. In the lithium equivalent, we'll be bringing that brine in, extracting the lithium out. In both cases, we then have to uh, store that brine that comes out the tailpipe and put it back in the ground. So in your opinion, what specific hurdles need to be cleared before EMP is gonna be at the stage where it can make a production decision? The only remaining hurdle left is the DLE technology. The DLE tech is the new piece of tech that everybody's been working on for two or three years. You know, we're now working with three or four companies. We've done some large volume tests, but the actual physical, mechanical, the blueprint of what the pilot plant is gonna be, 
that's what we're talking through right now. I can tell this lithium space excites you, right? You've, oh, been, yeah. you've been in the oil and gas a long time. W what is it about the lithium that really, you know, gets you motivated? It's right up our alley. It's exactly what we do. Bring brines, process them. Now there's a new commodity at play that uh, gives, gives us a, you know, previously the big oil companies owned the big reserves. In the lithium case, we were able to get out ahead of it, capture what we think will probably be the best project in Canada and get our hands in that early, be part of developing that. Absolutely. Well, best of luck. Thanks for meeting with us. Thank you. Although still a junior company in its early days, EMP Metals aims to explore and develop lithium brine assets in a bid to capitalize on and address domestic critical element supply chains. But first, it must demonstrate project viability. Operating in the business and mining friendly province of Saskatchewan, EMP's seasoned project technical team possesses deep resource experience to help advance the company's strategic objectives with the aim of reaching pilot level production in Q1 2024. Having raised $5 million earlier this year, EMP Metals is moving forward with a sense of urgency as the global supply of lithium struggles to keep pace with demand. Like this video and subscribe to never miss another adventure.